Today we're going to be programming an ECU using the new AC Delco TDS Tech Connect service. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and AC Delco has rolled out a new section of software for doing ECU updates and I had a P01 to upgrade anyway so I thought it'd be a good time to redo one of these videos about going through and programming. As usual I'm using an MDI, one of the knockoff ones. You can get them everywhere. Just search for you know uh, GM MDI. They're a, a dime a dozen, you know, a couple hundred bucks for them. And they show up as an MDI, which is the nice thing. And then, of course, I'm using the Bench Force interface. Uh, you guys have heard me talk about it in the past. If you're doing a lot of ECU things on the bench, they make nice custom harnesses that plug into the module. And so, big shout out to those guys for always supporting the garage. Let me see if I can get the module over here. Here's the module that plugs in you got an obd2 and then you've got this adapter harness that goes over to oh man these things are so big goes over to your ecu makes life easy if you're not doing a lot of bench programming things like that i like to use them for training classes you know probably not a big use for them but if you are it makes life so much easier because i've got multiple harnesses for E99s, E67s, E38s, all that stuff. So let's jump right into it. And the first thing that you're going to need to do whenever you get uh, your MDI hooked up is you got to download the GM MDI Manager. It's free out there. You can find it everywhere. And just make sure that everything works. So it says that we're not connected right now, even though it's showing our uh, MDI on there. I'm going to turn the unit on here. And they're disconnected. Turn it back on. Come on now. Here we go. We're booting up. It should find it again. We'll connect to it once it shows up and it connects via USB. There it is. So we can select it, show the details. It'll tell us that we need to update the PC software. And that's because the software that's on here is the old AC Delco Tech Connect stuff. So nothing really to do over here, but having the software, make sure that you have the drivers. As far as TDS, uh, it's free to sign up. You can go out there, open an account, sign up. The big things that you're going to want to take uh, pay attention to is we're going to be using the service programming system and it costs $40 per VIN, you get it access for two years to that VIN once you register it. And so you can see that I've got six active and one available. I've already purchased the VIN for this ECU that we're gonna be flashing uh, because we're basically just putting a stock ECU program into this ECU that did not come. This ECU came out of a different vehicle, but we're flashing it for a different vehicle. But you also have access to a couple other things on here, mainly uh, the, uh, repair manual and I'm in the way, but it's $20. Well, I guess you can see right here, $20 for three days or $150 per month. If you're doing any kind of high level wiring stuff like that, spend the 20 bucks. Uh, it has all the manuals, everything. If you're doing a job that you've never done before, it's a great way of getting that information and you can download it and save it or print it out and things like that. That's what I normally do. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and come up here and view and I'll have to blur this out because of all of the VIN numbers that I have on here. I don't want people to necessarily see some customer VINs that's on there. But you can see that, you know, when they expire, what's active, et cetera. And we're going to go ahead and add a VIN. And by doing so, it's going to go ahead and try and launch the software. Well, one of the big things that you need for this software is always going to be Java back in the day. Now we've got this TechLine Connect. So we'll just go ahead and download this TechLine Connect. This is the new software, it only takes a couple minutes. It's about half a gig, so keep that in mind. We will fast forward up until this is ready to install. And after the slowest download in history, it is finally ready to install. Let's launch this thing, holy cow. AC Delco's website is just absolutely slow to download. And open up the window it's an opening it up on a different screen i'll drag it open drag it over so you guys can see as soon as here we go okay so let's go ahead and click through this yes install we'll do the complete install 
Older versions will be uninstalled first. Well, technically, there's no older versions of Tech9 Connect on here. There's the old software, which was actually a Java launcher. This is more of a standalone software, so it works a little bit more seamless whenever it's all said and done than the old setup that AC Delco had going. So it's worth, I mean, I, you don't really have a choice at this point in time, but there is some very interesting things about this that we'll kind of touch on as we go through it. One of the things is, is sometimes it requires you to completely log out of uh, TDS and log back in and then relaunch. It's kind of a pain. I'm not sure what's going on there. It probably has something to do with the authorization. Basically, whenever you first log into TDS, you get an authorization to your account and it has to be renewed in order to launch TechLine Connect. It'll put a desktop link down for TechLine Connect. Theoretically, you should be able to double click on that and use your credentials to log into it. That doesn't seem to work. I don't know if I'm just doing something wrong or what's going on. It's just easier to launch it through TDS. Go to the TechLine Connect admin console and then we'll use this launch TechLine Connect button over here once everything is up and installed. So. We're going through the steps here. Once we get that up and going, it'll probably ask us to update our MDI, some things like that. That's totally normal. Get everything up to date. That way you're not gonna have any issues during the flash process and we'll take it from there. So, as I said, it's popped up here. It's asked for a username, password. I'm gonna go ahead and close this thing out. It's gonna shut down. And we're going to try and go ahead and launch it through that link that I told you about once it shuts down. So we're going to always have this tech line connect as admin checked. We'll see if we can do this. Yeah, we'll always allow this to happen. It's going to launch a batch file. Windows will ask you if it's all right. And once the batch file launches, it should open up tech line connect using your credentials. And right now, once again, it said it's checking the lease. You can't see that screen. I can't move it over to the other screen. Totally normal. It will pop open the screen and either we'll be good to go or we're going to have to log out and log back in. It's renewing the lease right now. We'll see if we get lucky or if we, or if we have to re-log. And it just shut down. We'll see if something else pops up. Yep. So lease checked out. We're checking for updates and it's now updating. Let me move this window. Okay. Okay, so not all not all updates are downloaded. Are installed so we're going to go ahead I'm going to shut it down I'm going to re-log into TDS real quick and we're going to try that because that tends to fix things log out log in Okay, we're logged back in here. We're going to go ahead and do our view. Add a VIN again. Now we're not authorized to use the page. And there we go. Okay, so let's launch it again. Go through this rigmarole. Lease looks good. So it was checking for software updates. Went, okay, now we're doing updates as you can see. So we'll go through the update process, get everything up to date. And once again, as I said, this is one of those things where logging out, logging back in fixes it. And the thing about it is we may have to do that again there's a bunch of windows popping up over here. They're just standard for all this stuff that you're seeing in this area saying to click yes to install. So I'm just clicking through that. You guys don't really care about seeing every single one of those windows. But as I said, once we get through updating it, there's a good chance that we may have to log out and log back in again to TDS to get this thing to 
recognize what, uh, you know, our credentials basically. Now, once everything's updated, you know, not an issue. I logged into it three or four days in a row, didn't have to do anything. The first time I launched it, everything worked perfectly fine. And in fact, this tech collect download manager just said that it was going to have to shut things down. So that's a good sign that we're probably going to have to re-log once again. Interesting enough, though, that you would think that whenever you download the TechLine Connect here, that it would be the most recent version. But now, after you download it, you still always have to do some kind of update. Now we're updating Service Programming 2, which, you know, replaces the SPS. This is now called SPS2. TechLine Connect is just the wrapper. And let's see what it does now. Waiting on you, Teclon. And it's checking the lease, software updates. Everything looks good. And it updated the wrapper again. And that's the J2534 wrapper that uses the interface with the uh, CAN bus interface. Software updates just checked out good. Now we'll see whether or not it's going to let us in or if we're going to have to re-log. Don't get discouraged by this process. I know it is slow and can be painful and it feels like you're doing things wrong sometimes, but we are in. We are in, we are in, we are in. So we're going to do a manual vehicle selection. I'm going to put in a VIN number over here for the customer that we're programming this for. And it populated it. I'll have the VIN blurred out here, but we've got 2000 Pontiac Firebird that we're going to select. And now it pops up the window asking us what device we're going to use. We're going to go ahead and do the MDI. Even though this says it's an MDI 2, we're going to use the MDI. The drivers are the same on both of them. It just makes life a little bit easier, but it shows that we are now connected. And let's go ahead and go into SPS2 here. Loading Service Programming System 2. This is the one that connects to all of your modules, things like that. Allows you to choose what you want to update. It's got to update all the libraries and things like that. Once again, might take a couple minutes based on how well your internet is and based on how bad AC Delco's internet is. Generally goes pretty quick. So we've got our uh, Firebird up here. We're going to reprogram. And so we should be able to auto detect the tool. Oh, next down here at the bottom. You couldn't see it, it was behind me. Oop, moving the wrong window. Try and move me up out of the way. There you go, so you can see. So here we go, we got the PCM, VCM. That's what we're actually going to be programming. That's the only option that we have because that's the only thing that's on here right now. If you were connected in, even on these older cars, that's all that's going to show up. But if you were connected to a newer car, it's going to populate all of the different module options that you have for that VIN number. Whenever you input the VIN number, it goes back to their servers and says, okay, here's the build for that. Here's all the modules that should be on there. So we'll go ahead and do next for the PCM, VCM. And it says, the current vehicle will take up one of your available VIN slots. That's perfectly fine. That's what we got that extra slot for. So it's going to register that. And we'll have that VIN unlocked for two years now. And it is reading the vehicle data. I've got the key off, which is essentially key off right now. So I don't know whether or not it'll get anything. Okay. So let's go ahead and turn the key on. So now effectively the car is on. We'll go back down to next. Doing the PCM next. It's checking the VIN. Yes, we will take one of our VIN slots. And now it should be communicating with the ECM on this. It's validating, getting the programming data. There we go. And so here is the OS number right here that we're going to be writing in here. 9381334. If you ever hear somebody talk about OSs for things like segment swaps and stuff like that. If you're uh, trying to write a specific OS to a uh, ECU or for whatever, before you actually write it, you can verify the OS number. And so we'll go ahead and do next. 
and start programming. So here's all the stuff as far as, okay, here's all the changes it looks like. Let's just start programming, see what happens. Okay, there we go. We are downloading from the server the file. Should be a pretty small file. This is P01, as I said. And it's going to verify it, and then it's going to write it to the vehicle. So here we go. We're in the programming process. It says it's going to take, well, there we're down to eight, down to six minutes. It's going pretty fast, five minutes. See, once you get this up and running, it's a very straightforward, easy process. goes by really quick. Uh, you know, obviously later generation stuff, Gen 4, Gen 5, stuff like that, writing to, to different modules takes a lot longer because you're dealing with a lot bigger files. You know, the P01s and, the, and stuff like that, uh, the P59s, they're all pretty small uh, files. Uh, and so they're going to go quick. But if you get into the E67s and things like that, it might take 15 minutes. You get into the 5th gen, it might take 20, 25 minutes to write. A file so if you're doing that on a laptop it's one of those things that you want to make sure the thing's plugged in you and you don't want to allow it to go to sleep during the process so go into your power settings and turn off sleep options for the hard drive and and things like that because the last thing that you want to do it's not going to hurt anything specifically on the older stuff on a p01 yeah if it shut down in the middle of writing a p01 it could potentially brick it but on the later generation stuff, if it if it shuts down in the middle of flashing, it's not going to hurt it. You're going to just have to go through the process again. But the last thing you want to do is get 15 minutes in on a 20 minute flash, have that thing shut down on you and have to go back through the process of trying to write this thing all over again. And so we're just about 30 seconds here away from having our new Pontiac Firebird ECU flashed with a very uh, with a factory stock setup. And so in the case of this situation, the guy's got a tuned vehicle, but it's a locked tune. And so what we're doing is just basically putting an ECU in that's completely stock. He can go in and go through the tuning process. He's wanting to learn the tuning process anyways. And so starting from stock a lot of times is a lot easier, but whenever you can't even get into it, you know, uh, sometimes this is a good option. Granted, you could probably just go ahead and overwrite the thing, but this also gives you the opportunity that if you need to go back to the ECU that had the tune that he paid for it on, he can just swap over to it because you can't download that tune. You can't do anything like that. Uh, and so if he were to override it, that tune would be lost. Grandy doesn't have access to it, but the car runs on the tune right now. And so this just means that he can swap these out start tuning on this and for some reason if he's having issues he can go back to the one that's locked and go from there so we're done with this that's exactly it you know we could proceed with the same vin if we were doing multiple modules on different on a, a car that had multiple modules that's not the case especially because we're on a bench harness that's the only one and as you can see this is a pretty straightforward easy process uh you know nothing really to it so i just want to walk you guys through techline connect i know that some of you will uh end up using this at some point in time i've used this to write uh ecms back to factory specs whenever i've lost an as found and wanted to start over uh, i've used it in the process of on the super auto whenever i switched it over to a, a manual valve body automatic i needed to be able to write a manual transmission tune in there and i've got a video of going through on the old sps system and using a corvette configuration and downloading it into the silverado's ecu and then you know later on i went back and used as i actually used uh, SPS2 or Techline Connect to rewrite the Silverado configuration back in there because I put the automatic back in there. So whenever you get into some of these one-off programming situations, things like that, it's a good thing to have, you know, your clone MDI sitting around for a couple hundred bucks. And then it says it's 40 bucks. Everything else about it is, you know, there's no other fees. You just pay 40 bucks for the VIN access. You're good to go and you can update your modules. And that's the other nice thing on top of everything is if you've got one of the modern cars and you know there's updates to certain modules, this is a cheaper way of doing it without having to go to the dealership. Like a, a prime example is the Z06 supported android auto but didn't have the file loaded into it for android auto i was able to use my mdi and uh techline connect to update the radio and now the android auto works in it and things like that just small updates you know quality of life updates 
to the TCM module, stuff like that are worth doing on these modern cars without having to drag it all the way back in. And it's all tied back to your, your VIN number. So whenever they, if you do take it in for something and they go to see if there's any updates that need to be done, it's already going to show that it's been updated on that VIN number. So you're good to go there. But that's it. That's the end of it for now. I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks for stopping by the garage. And you guys know the drill. ABT, always be tuning.